Hi, I'm Max, and welcome to A History of Horrors, a show where I tell my friend, Paco Hermes, history's scariest stories, which may be true or false. <laughs> How you doing? Hi. Yes, I'm doing fine. Nice. You ready for some spooky stories? Spooky stories. Yes. Okay. I am ready. We are going to start with some draw-jumping stuff. The execution of Maximilian Robespierre. That sounds French. It is French. During the French Revolution, Maximilian got sentenced to death by guillotine. The moment he realized it. The moment he realized, he decided to shoot himself. But unfortunately, he failed and survived. But he was still brought to the guillotine. The executioner ripped off the bandage that kept his jaw together and... His Literally mouth, jaw-dropping stuff. Yeah, his mouth fell open and he screamed a hellish scream. And the people were scared. Really scared. Truly jaw-dropping. Yeah. Yeah. What? Well, how? When? When was this? During the French Revolution? Yeah, uh, during the 18th century. Wow. wow. So, he shot himself in the face. Yeah, and, and failed. then, like, through his jaw. And this was all open. Damn. And he went, like, ah, and then he died. Ooh. Well, he died at the guillotine, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Order, so right? his head got chopped off. But before that, the execution just ripped it off, and then his jaw fell on. Damn. Damn. Another it's guillotine a, is story. Is that a true story? That's a true story. Yeah, it's real. Uh, another guillotine story. Uh, um, a woman that... A scientist that uh, wanted to discover what happens after your head gets chopped off. She asked the prisoner to keep blinking even though the guillotine fell. And his head kept blinking 30 seconds after the guillotine chopped off his head. Yeah. I think I think it's possible. Yeah, it it is. It's true. Because, yeah, you can live without your heart. I think and other organs for a few seconds. Yeah, for a few seconds. Yeah, yeah. Not not like no. I'm eighty and I don't have a heart. <laughs> no, but you can live like uh, because, in fact, to to live, you only need your brain. But f- yeah. for a few seconds. For a few seconds. So you can live. You can continue living for a few seconds with just your brain. Yeah. But then you die. Yes. And now, dead men's dentures. Ooh. Dentures were a pretty big deal for the upper class in the early 19th century. Due to their high sugar diet and the toothbrush not being invented yet, the upper class had really bad teeth. So, what was their solution? Uh, ripping the teeth out? Yep. It's they t- true? They took the teeth of dead young soldiers and used them as dentures. And immediately after the Battle of Waterloo, where a lot of people died, all the rich, rich people sent um, their peasants with um, pliers to rip out the teeth of dead men. Like clean teeth? Yeah, yeah. Oh. And then they like made uh, something so you can put it in your mouth. And then they had new teeth. That's fucked up. Yep. Well, I mean, they don't need their teeth anymore if they're dead. No. And now... Bad furniture. That's the new story. In the 80s, an author called Yuzuho Tagawa... Sounds Japanese. It is Japanese. Was looking to buy a chair after moving to a new town. She bought a large old chair from a second-hand fir- furniture store, Ooh. and the clerk told her that a good chair could change your life. The chair is possessed. And it, this was a really good chair. She bought the chair and sat in it a lot, and one day she was reading letters from her favorite fans, and one of the letters really stood out. It was an anonymous letter, and the writer told that he was her greatest fan, but was afraid to show himself. Hmm. Mm. He wrote that he was a carpenter too, and he didn't have to be visible to be close to her. He had confessed that he had built a chair in which he could sit and hide. Ah, uh, I know the story. You know the story? He was in the chair all along. Yeah, 
The author sprang up and ran to her husband who laughed at what she said. To calm her down and prove that there was nobody in the chair, he sat in it. The author begged him to get off the chair, but he was stabbed in his back. A knife came out of the chair and the author ran and called the cops. So it was a big chair. It was a really big chair. Yeah. Oh, yeah. A really nice, soft, big it's chair. Soft. Like yeah. this one. We're like sitting in right one. now. Yeah, yeah, this one. Yeah. yeah this could, could fit a person. Maybe a really small person. Maybe someone in here right now. The cops found her hiding outside of her house. And when they came in, the chair was torn apart on the back side. And they found a space in which somebody could literally sit. Wow. The man was never found. <sighs> How did he escape, though? I, I think he just ran. <laughs> Do you think it's real? Yeah. It's this is a fake story written by Junji Ito. Sadly. What? It could be real. It could be real, but it's not. Well, that's sad. No, it's not sad. I don't want people being in my chair. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah. People in the chair just stabbing you in the butt. Like, no. he's right down here. No, but, but like his head is here and his arms are in here. And then his legs are like where you're sitting. Oh. And then he's just like. He's, he's just waiting there. for someone he has a to buy the chair. With a Pepsi. He's like. I wonder how long he was in the chair in at the store before someone bought it. Maybe it's the store clerk. Ooh. Ooh. But then he got in the chair after the woman bought it. Yeah. So. He sold the chair to the woman. Sold the chair, followed her to her house. Sat in the chair. Sat in the chair. Stabbed her husband. Stabbed her husband in the back. And ran away. And ran away. And now, he's the chair man. Okay. Next story. Whoa. Attack of the dead men. I think I know this. You know this one? I think Why I do. you know everything? I spent a lot yeah. of time searching for stories. No, 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 maybe I don't know it. Continue, please. Once upon a time in 1915 at Osowick Fortress, Osowick Fortress, Russian oh, soldiers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's Russian. Russian soldiers were fighting German forces, and sadly, the Russians were not on the winning side. And when it couldn't get any worse, the Germans used one of their most unstable, but also most deadly weapon. Poison gas. Poison. I know this story. This you fucked. Know, you know this. Just continue, okay. please. Uh, the gas was made from bromine and chlorine, which, if mis mixed, will turn into a toxic acid. The moment the Germans threw the two poison gas bombs, the Russians started to cough up blood, and the grass around them turned black. They resorted to uh, covering their faces with cloth, which did not help against the gas. Nah. And just the blood kept coming out of their lungs. Everything around them was dying, and the thick yellow gas made it extremely difficult to see what was ahead. Russians died by the second, but quite a few remained. They did not surrender, but rather embraced their dire situation. Anger and fury was what was all that was on their mind, a witness said. Thus, they ran towards their poisoners, the Germans. The Germans were safe in their trenches, as the wind blew towards the Russians. Yeah. All they could see was a large wall of thick yellow smoke obstructing their vision, but not for long. Very soon screams of agony could be heard, and tons of Russians came running from the gas wall. They were covered in blood, their skin was falling off their faces, and they had yellow rotting eyes. According to eyewitnesses, the Russians had nothing left to lose, and ran towards the enemy with the sole purpose to end them. Wow. Later, this battle will be known as the attack of the dead men, or the attack of the corpses. I know this story. You know this story. I know it's not real. It is real. It is real? It's real. How? Th this is really real, yeah. They, they were just rotting away and they ran towards the Germans and killed them. And died. Did the Russians win, though, at the end? Nobody won. They, they all died? Yeah, Everyone died? Except for a few German eyewitnesses. Wow. Yeah. But how? I mean, I mean, if you are that dedicated to win, I mean, if you have nothing left to lose, you could just run, run, and while scream. Your skin's falling off, and you're, and you're dying on the blood. spot. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, I thought it was fake, but I heard the story. It's real. It's completely real. I just saw it on TikTok and assumed it was fake because it was a dude like the attack of the dying man. It sounded fake. Yeah. Just by the voice of the dude. 
telling the story. Yeah. No, it's just, uh, yeah. It's, it's yeah, quite kind of story. fucked up. Next story? Next story. Exciting. Diving in the dark. Ooh. One time, the marine biologist David Campbell went diving to, a, to see a plateau somewhere in the Pacific with a coral reef on it. Mm. David went with his colleagues on a regular boat to sail far from the shore. It was dusk when the crew arrived and told David and his fellow diver William that they will be using light signals to tell David when it gets too dark or if something else was happening. Or if something else was happening. Two flashes of light meant it was going to become too dark, and three flashes of light me- meant real danger. Real danger. And just get up there as fast as possible. David and William went down and started swimming towards the coral plateau. Um, David kept swimming, not noticing that William was staying behind. Um, David took a few photos and saw a shadow swimming above him. That must be William. David must be William. Were they like going down to a plateau made just uh, from the earth itself or made by humans? No, it was, it's like a, a really big... Like a, it's like a, a pillar. mountain underwater. Yeah, yeah a mountain underwater. So it was, everything is oh, yeah. deep ocean, and then you have a little bit of shallow water. Oh yes, oh, not that shallow. It's like it's yeah, like less ten, deep. Yeah, less <laughs> deep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, that must be William. Yeah. David thought, but then David saw a flash of light, and then another, and then a third one. Thirds. William there. was gone, and it was really dark. David swam off as fast as possible and was dragged into the boat like the water was poison. The crew looked pale and David immediately asked for William. Luckily, William was already on the boat. He was he on just the boat. left him there? Yeah, he just <laughs> left him there. How, how did it get dark so quick? Or was it just a lot of time? It, it was dusk, so it was oh. becoming dark. They didn't have a lot of time. Luckily, William was on the boat already. He was for a while. And he told David that while he was swimming... He saw a very large silhouette circling the plateau. Shark. Or something. 